you know, one of those little things. I live close enough to town that it was worth it just to drive into town and get it. But you can see now I've got it broke loose and we're just spinning that, just spinning it off. Once you break the torque, we're just gonna spin the, whoopsie. Oh well, fan's broke anyway. Well, change of plans for today. I thought I was gonna be going to town to get my oxygen bottle filled or exchanged. And I thought I was gonna go pick up some logs for the sawmill. And I thought I'd work on the excavator. But my truck had other plans. My truck decided to crater the water pump. <sighs> So I was going to get my torch and I could hear a little squeaky squeak. It's been doing that for a while, no big deal. And then coming home, I heard a rattle whap, whatever you want to call it. And I lost power steering and power brakes. And so I said, well, I just snapped my serpentine belt. I thought that's all I had done. And I didn't smell a burnt belt. So I didn't think anything had locked up. And that's true, nothing's locked up. In fact, We've got all the room in the world here. She's nice and loose. It's broken. Maybe it's just the clutch assembly on the fan itself, but I'm thinking it's the whole daggum water pump. So the belt actually is not broken. <laughs> Although I won't be reusing it. I'll get a new belt because it's pretty chewed up and nasty. But the first order of business is going to be, I guess, getting the water pump off, whatever that takes. And it's been a while since I've done one. I'm trying to remember if there's a special clutch tool that I got to use. I think there is to get the fan off the pump. I'll probably have to pull out my reservoir and my radiator, which I've done before, so that's no big deal. But it's a big pain in the butt. But what I wanted to mention that makes me so happy is God bless a diesel because this happened about eight or nine miles from home maybe five miles I don't know but I said well we're just gonna take her slow I had the option to pull in at a, a shop right there in town but then my truck would have been at their place not at a shop but a, a, a parts house but I figured they're a pretty small town. They usually don't have a lot of stuff in stock. I guarantee they wouldn't have this water pump. Probably not even the serpentine belt. Maybe. But I figured, you know what? We're close enough to home. I'm going to risk it. I'm going to gamble. And when we got home, she was steaming a little bit. I suppose coming out of the overflow. But it didn't get anywhere near the risk of fully overheating. Which actually, yeah, there's still, there's still fluid in the reservoir, it looks like. It's kind of hard to tell. Maybe it did leak out of the reservoir, but... Oh! <laughs> yeah, I believe it leaked out of the reservoir. <laughs> that piece of plastic... I imagine... is the bottom of the reservoir. So, anyway, we didn't totally overheat it. Lucky today is not too hot yet today, and I took it slow, so... I think we're okay, but I guess I'll be replacing the reservoir too, which it's got to come off there anyway to work on everything else. Yay, great fun. Time to work on the truck. Okay, so we're back under the hood of the power stroke today. <clears throat> You'll have to forgive the, the blue tint. I've got my tarp set up here just to keep the sun off of me. We're gonna start tearing this thing apart to get this water pump out. Uh, first few things are pretty basic. Gotta get the reservoir off, which of course it's uh, it's broken anyway. At the bottom of it got a chip bust out of it. Uh, get the fan shroud off. I crawled underneath there and opened the drain uh, valve on the radiator and nothing came out, which is what I expected. The way this water pump is broken and the fan is dangling, I imagine when it broke, pretty much my whole coolant system went right away. Because by the time I got home, there was no puddle, no nothing dripping. There was just kind of some steam coming off the engine. So uh, according to the temperature gauge, it never got overheated, but I don't know, maybe, I don't know if the temperature gauge would work correctly if the all the fluids dumped from the system, but anyway, um, it didn't seem like it was running bad at all when I got home, when it was a pretty short trip from when it broke to when I got home. So 
I think we'll be okay. Anyway, you're gonna start taking out all the um, extras here, and uh, then I'll give you a little update as things are going once I start to get to where I'm actually taking the water pump itself off. All right, so basics aside, I got the reservoir out, fan shroud, uh, the serpentine belt, which is actually still intact, although chewed all to hell, and the radiator out. So we're looking down in here now on top of the fan, and I showed you guys the other day. Not too great, huh? So the bearing assembly inside the water pump is totally, totally gone. Um, at least, I imagine the whole water pump is cratered, but it's, it's gonna get replaced whether it is or not. Um, but now I've gotta get this fan off of here, and I've watched a few other people on how their little tricks, how they've gotten a screwdriver in there, or they've, um, one guy had a basically a chain wrench on this pulley. I don't have either one of those. I think I've got a, a decent sized screwdriver maybe that I can get wedged down between the bolts. I tried putting an open end wrench on one of the bolts there and then putting a big cheater bar on that and then using a, a big crescent here, uh, but I haven't been able to get the leverage on it like I want. So let me keep tinkering on it here and then I'll tell you if I figure out a way to do it or if I end up going to town and getting the tool. One thing I think I failed to mention earlier, um, I mentioned at the start that I thought my overflow reservoir was broken because when I first popped the hood I found a piece of plastic, but it wasn't the overflow at all. It was the, the fan itself is where the chunk of white plastic came from. Just uh, ironic that it's the same color. Um, as for this removal tool, I went ahead and went to town and I got the rental tool. Uh, totally worth it. And I was just going to show you guys real quick how it works. This just clips onto a half inch drive breaker bar or ratchet and just sets right on your there's four bolts there on your pulley that make a square pattern so you slide this on and it will actually that square head fits over those four bolts so you see you got a square pattern and basically you got a bolt in each corner of the square uh, and then the other part of it they have it, it comes with um, it comes with wrenches too to get on that big nut on the fan clutch um, but I already I just had a crescent sitting up here that I was already trying to use so I just used this big crescent and it broke loose real easy so you know one of those little things I live close enough to town that it was worth it just to drive into town and get it but you can see now I've got it broke loose and we're just spinning that just spin it off once you break the torque we're just gonna spin the whoopsie oh well fans broke anyway okay so on the ground here behind me I've got the new water pump I've got to get the old pump I got to get this pulley assembly off Jesus Gotta get the pulley assembly off. Gotta get the old water pump off. Um, that's an adapter neck there that'll come off and go back on. I've got the new fan ordered. I think the clutch assembly in the fan itself is fine, but I had to get a new fan itself, obviously, because it's all busted up. So I'm gonna keep tinkering, but the next step here should be to pull off the water pump itself. I'm not sure how much more I've got to disconnect. So I'm gonna look at the new water pump and see what all is connected to it to know what I need to disconnect here off my engine before I just start pulling random things. All right, so we just got the pump pulled off. I'm just gonna show you guys the carnage. All these uh, aluminum shavings. I'm sure those are good for everything. Try to flush those out of there as best I can, I guess. Just throw a bucket of water. I don't, I don't really have a proper way to flush it out, I don't think, but anyway. That's on the inside, on the front of the block, basically, where that pump dropped and started rubbing on everything. And uh, I'll show you the pump here on the ground. And I don't know if this is an original pump or not, but this thing absolutely grenaded. So on the outside, you know, it's just kind of loose, but if we flip it over on the inside, you can see our propellers all just chewed all to hell or impeller, whatever you want to call it. You can see all sorts of wear pattern down inside there where it knocked sideways. This is actually grooved out, so it's flat down here. But here it's actually got a, a groove to it because um, obviously this was, the, this was the top side, so you can see how the, how the propellers there rubbed against it for just from the weight of the pulley dangling once it broke. So really just that, that bearing assembly, whatever it was in there is what took a dump on us. Um, but yeah. <laughs> It just beat the ever-living hell out of this pump when it did. Oh, this uh, temperature sensor here broke off, which I guess would be my temperature sensor that reads to the dash. I went to try to disconnect the wiring plug, and it just snapped. So I'll have to replace that. Um, 
which yeah then kind of makes me wonder it's like well the temperature gauge in the truck was reading okay <laughs> maybe it wasn't working i don't know it's all corroded out but we'll replace that i replaced the thermostat about probably two years ago um but i think since i'm in here i'm going to go ahead and do it anyway because i've got to get there's a seal that goes on here actually i think the new kit came with a replacement now it didn't either so this this comes with a new seal but this is on your lower adapter is where that seal goes so it didn't come with a new replacement for the thermostat or it didn't come with a new seal for this thermostat here so i'm gonna have to go get a therm I, you know i can't just swap my thermostat over i gotta get the ring anyway i don't have any gasket maker so i'll just go ahead and get the new thermostat with the new seal there but anyway it's all out for tonight i'm really not sure what to do about cleaning all that little bits of aluminum and garbage out of there like i said other than just kind of take a garden hose and just flush it out i'm sure there's more of it down inside the the bottom of the engine and probably in the radiator too so probably just get all this put back together and run the engine for a little while and then do another radiator flush and see if anything else comes out of it um i don't know maybe somebody else out there will see this and have an idea of something else i'm supposed to do but we at least got a tour apart that was my goal for this evening i'm gonna go in the house get some dinner and uh maybe once the kids are in bed i'll come out here and try to start bolting stuff back on but it's all just bolt on bolt off sort of stuff you just gotta have the parts and pieces to do it all right just got the new pump fitted back up i just scrubbed the, all that old seal off as best i could uh just went through with a little scraper and then a wire brush and just really really worked on it till it felt like it was smooth all the way around the seal on this thing it comes with a new seal and it's a good heavy duty rubber seal uh, so i'm hoping we won't have any issues but i've just gone around now and uh put the pump back on and uh, just got all the bolts started. So now we can just run around and just kind of snug them up. Uh, the bolts as they were coming out, they were, a couple, there was actually three different lengths, three different sizes bolts. So I had to kind of keep up with that as I worked my way around. Um, and it seems that I got it right on the first time around, just putting them back in. These three here, um, around the ports those three are all really long and then you got a bunch of relatively short ones that are on the flat face of the flange and then this one right here is is medium length for some reason but i'm just going to go around each one here and snug them up i don't really know what the proper torque specs are so we're just going to zip them on and i don't know I guess I can go see if I can figure out the torque specs and I'm sure I can find it online. But then I'd also have to go find my torque wrench. So, don't know. Might just run them on here and say it's good enough. But, get this put back on and we'll start bolting on everything else that we can uh, with the parts that I have for tonight. I think I'm pretty well tapped out for tonight. Um, but I've got everything that I could swapped over. I've got my pulley back on the pump here. I've got my line that goes to the heater core hooked back up. A little mention on that, it has a, a tapered tip up here and then it's got a kind of a square shouldered rib in the middle. And you start to push that hose on, it tags up on that rib. So just don't forget about your old buddy, WD-40. I just shot some WD-40 inside the hose and whoop, it slipped on easy as could be. I did go ahead and find my torque wrench just for the chagrin. I looked it up on the Google webs and it was 18 foot pounds which to me felt really light i mean i basically broke over at 18 and was able to just keep on going but everyone on there agreed it was 18 foot pounds so we went with it the kit for the water pump comes with a new drop elbow for your lower radiator hose so i got that got that hose bolted back or that elbow bolted back on um kind of debated whether or not i wanted to do that and then have to try to fight the hose back onto it later but i decided i'm going to go ahead and replace that lower radiator hose I haven't replaced it since I've owned the truck. I've replaced the upper off the thermostat, but not the lower. This little port here is where um, your thermostat probe is at, or your temperature probe, which I mentioned broke on me. So I got the the fitting out. I got it in the box here behind me to take to the store tomorrow just to make sure I get the right one. Um, but I got the fitting out, so I'll be ready to thread the new one in tomorrow. I'll get my new thermostat on there tomorrow. Um, and I'll get my new fan clutch 
assembly, which actually I guess I could probably put I could put that on tonight and then just bolt the fan to it. Let me take a look at that and see. Because I've got to take the fan off the other clutch assembly anyway, so maybe I can put the clutch assembly back on and be able to bolt the new fan in tomorrow. Let me look at that. I thought I was done, but maybe I'm not. Almost tricked myself. Yes, I can separate the fan from the clutch, but I can't put the clutch on and then put the fan on. <laughs> because the fan has to go on the back of the clutch assembly. So you got to put the fan to the clutch and then put the whole thing on the truck. So I at least got it separated tonight. I'll get the new fan and everything else I need in the morning and we'll be back at it. All right, we're back busy on it this morning. And I forgot to show you little snippets because I just got busy working, but um, got my new temperature probe put back in. New thermostat, shiny new thermostat inside. This is the adapter. Had to reuse the, the hose adapter, but new thermostat, new seal ring. Showed you last night, I think I got the new elbow on down there. Um, water pumps back on, new fan, swapped onto the clutch assembly. Be careful with that. I was just using a quick little impact driver and I stripped out one of the four screws that goes, that mounts the fan to the clutch. Also, I learned the hard way that um, your fan is directional as far as which way it bolts to the clutch. Wasn't really a big deal. I just, I put it on backwards the first time, went to spin the clutch up and then realized that I couldn't get my wrenches in there. That's how I knew it was wrong because I couldn't get the tools in there like I could before. But just pay attention to that when you take your fan off, which way is up and down. Um, I don't know if you put it on backwards, I think it would still work properly as far as the, the pitch of the fins. I think it would still pull the air the right way, but again, you'd have hell trying to put it all back together and it might not line up quite right because the fan was also super close to the pulleys, closer to the pulleys than it was supposed to be. So anyway, that's on. Just set the shroud in. I'm fixing to set the radiator in, get it all bolted back up, connect the last few hoses, and we'll get this puppy filled up with coolant and running again. All right, one other silly mistake, lesson learned here. I put the fan and radiator and everything back in before I put my serpentine on. Yes, it is technically doable to put your belt around the fan and work it all in there, but it was a total pain in the butt. Uh, given that I had the fan tool already, I found it much easier just to break the fan back off again real quick, get the belt on, put the fan back on. Uh, so serpentine belt is on, it threw me for a loop for just a second. Uh, just trying to figure out which way it had to go. I thought for a second that I had a belt too long, but there's this handy dandy little diagram right here underneath on the frame, um, which I had not fully followed, so it was my own fault. So I got it on there now. The last thing to do is put a couple hoses on and put my reservoir back on. We'll be done. All right, that's that. Reservoir's back in, upper radiator hoses on, belts back on. All the lower radiator hoses are on from the reservoir and the return. So, yeah. I'm looking around on the ground, not seeing any spare parts or pieces. The new water pump came with a new elbow. So that's junk. That's the hose I replaced. Uh, yeah, all I'm seeing is junk. So we're gonna get some coolant dumped in this puppy, get the truck started and see how she does. Well, one more thing. It's my own stupid fault. Filled it all the way up with coolant. And right when it got to the top, started dumping coolant out on the ground. My immediate fear was that it was the seal on the water pump somehow leaking, but it wasn't. It was the top of the radiator, all bashed and marred up from when the fan cut loose and was beating on everything. So once I get the radiator pulled out here, I'll show it to you. Just I, I should have caught it. I should have looked at it. Never even thought it. Never even crossed my mind. So yeah, five gallons of brand new coolant. Five gallons out and wasted. I'm not gonna try to pour this stuff back through. We'll have to go get new replacement coolant. Well, at least I feel like we should. I don't like the idea of reusing it and not knowing. Oh, I want to. Darn it. I don't know. Maybe I can filter it through a shirt or something. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I'm going to do I'm not going to replace it because that's a pain in the ass. Oh, well, it's another 50 bucks, and I think I can probably reuse it because there's going to be little bits of aluminum and stuff in here just from that water pump going out that are worse than anything that's inside this bucket. I used the bucket yesterday to drain out the original coolant. Anyway, so... Uh, get the coolant drained out here, get the radiator yanked back out, have to go to town and get a new one. 
and maybe then we'll be done. I've already gone through the top side, disconnected everything that I could as far as pulling hoses and whatnot. Um, so yeah, now it's just a matter of waiting for it all to drain out and lift it on out of there. Yep. Reckon I should have seen that the first time. I was just so focused on the water pump, I didn't even think about the potential damage to the radiator. See, there wasn't any, there's no rub marks anywhere down here in the body. But right there at the top, boy, she got it. All right, let's get to town and get a new one. All right, well, there you have it for now, anyway. I just got the truck started, got the tools all popped off. It could use a little bit more, but it's fine. It's at the low end, the full range. I'm gonna let the engine just sit here and run and get warmed up. And I'm not really sure if the thermostat has opened up much or not yet because I just started, so I want to see once the engine gets good and hot, if, uh, if it opens up and cycles and takes any more of that cool, and I don't know if it will or not. Put my temp gauge in here, sitting on cold, which of course I just started the truck, so we'll have to see once the temp gauge warms up if it, uh, like I said, if anything changes. But hopefully that gauge is working. It's not sitting on dead. That's the one that the wires broke to. I had to replace that little sensor. So hopefully it's actually working. I was a little nervous that the truck might not start since I snapped the belt five miles from home and thought, well, I don't know if the drain the battery is driving the last five miles, but the nice thing about the diesel is it doesn't really use any battery. You just keep on driving. So anyway, hopefully it's all fixed here. Um, Anyway, yeah, the lens is fogging up. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna hope that it's fixed and let you know, let you guys know if anything changes, anything different.